in this video I'm going to talk about sRGB color space and linear color space and why these two are important in game development. So to understand these concepts better, let me explain a little bit the history behind this. In the old days when LCD monitors were not available, we had CRT monitors or cathode ray tube monitors. In these monitors there were three electron guns, one for red, one for green and one for blue. Each of these electron guns shoot an electron beam toward the screen and they create a mixture of the red, green and the blue which can produce any color. So imagine now we want to produce a red pixel somewhere in our screen. We send a signal to a red electron gun and that produces a red spot on a screen. Now all the point here is this. The relation between the input signal and the brightness of that pixel is not linear. Basically, these curves show the relation between the input signal and produced brightness on the screen. You can see by doubling the input signal, we don't produce twice brighter pixel. But in the real world, this is not true. If we double the light source on an object, the object is twice brighter. So in real world, we have a linear relation between the actual luminance and the detected light. So now if I have an image like this one, and I want to show that on my CRT monitor, I cannot send the exact brightness of each pixel in real world into my monitor. What I should do is to put my pixel brightness into this curve. So this will compensate for the effect of the monitor. And this curve is encoded inside the image itself. I mean, if you use PNG or JPEG to compress your image, when you uncompress your image, the data that you receive is already on this curve and you don't need to calculate them and put them on this curve. And this curvy color space is called sRGB color space. And one thing you should note that both curves at 0 and 1 are equal. The difference is between 0 and 1. Now what is the mass formula for these curves? For this middle curve, each output luminance equal to input signal to power up a constant number. We call this constant number gamma, which is around 2.2. And other curve has this formula. Now you might say, today we have LCD monitors. Do we still have the gamma curve like CRT monitor? And the answer is yes. After LCD came, manufacturers still apply the same gamma curve in monitor despite they could remove this. It means even now your monitor applies a gamma correction to the picture that it receives. There are two reasons for that. First, there is a back compatibility with older monitors. And second, there is some benefit to storing image data in sRGB color space. So here I will tell you what are the benefits of storing our data in sRGB color space. But please don't confuse this with previous stuff. No one designed CRT monitor intentionally to work like this. This was just an engineering block. So in this matter, everything relies on the difference between how our eyes perceive brightness and how a normal camera sensor perceives brightness. A normal camera sensor detects brightness in a linear relationship to how much it receives the light. It means if I double the amount of the light, it will detect the double amount of the light. But our eyes are different. They do not perceive light in a linear relationship to the light source. This course shows how our eyes perceive light. And this is a good feature which let us perceive color in darker area better. Now look at this curve. Isn't this similar to the sRGB curve which I showed you before? And why this similarity is useful? Storing data in sRGB color space is useful because we spend more data for darker areas and less in brighter areas. And this is how exactly our eyes work. As an example, if I want to store this linear gradient color in 5 bit or in 32 level, if I store that linearly, it will look like this. You can see storing this in linear color space will result in some bad effect in darker areas. But if I store that in sRGB space, it will look like this. You can see this time we have a better effect in darker space as we put more data space for darker area. 
but we have less data in brighter area but that is not important as our eyes will not notice that much now usually we don't store each color in 5 bits we store them in 8 bits but also in 8 bit we get a better effect if we store that in sRGB color space I hope up to this point this was clear for you so up to this point we know most photos stored in sRGB color space which has this curve but what all of this has to do with game development well this concept is really important in computer graphic especially when you want to put a texture on a 3D mesh Usually when you put a texture on a mesh, you have a color texture, a normal map texture, roughness, height map, and so on. The important thing here is that when you calculate the light effect on your 3D model, all of the texture above should be in linear color space. Because sRGB color space makes everything more complicated. And by the way, after calculating all of the different effects on your 3D model, the final output image will be comma corrected before sending that to show on monitors. So here usually all the data textures are in linear space. But albedo texture or color texture is in its RGB color space. Also this is really important to know when you want to generate your texture by yourself. This is why when you bake a 3D model normal map in Blender, you put that as non-color data. Basically, when you put a non-color data flag in Blender, Blender will leave that in linear color space. So as you import the albedo texture inside your shader code, you should convert that into linear color space. So for converting your albedo texture to linear space, there are two methods. First one is to convert this to linear space before importing that inside your shader. As an example, I have this rock texture in GIMP. Here in image, precision, I change from sRGB to linear light. And I export this image as PNG. Now if I put this in my 3D model, it is already in linear color space. But this is not a good practice because this way we lose some information. Remember in first place we store in sRGB color space to have more pleasing color to human eyes. So the better method is to convert our image from sRGB color space to linear color space inside our shader code. Every software has its own method but I will show that to you in Godot engine. So here in my shader code, I define a sampler to the uniform for my rock texture and I read from my sampler to the texture and I put the result inside the albedo output of my fragment function. What you can see here is that the color of my rock is really unnatural and that is because Godot assumes every texture is in linear color space. But this is not. One way to correct this is to manually convert this from sRGB to linear color space. And the mass formula for that is this. So here I use this mass formula to convert this into linear space. You can see my rock texture look much better now. Another easier way is to give Godot a source color hint and it will automatically change this from sRGB to linear color space for us. So I hope you like this video and till the next video have a good time.